Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking at the installation process of JavaFX on IntelliJ Community Edition, as well as creating a very first JavaFX project. Now I'm using a Mac, but the process should not be too different for those using Windows. Let's get started. To get started, let's first navigate to gluonhq.com slash products slash JavaFX. Once you're there in the browser, go ahead and scroll down to the download section. We're going to be using 18.0.1 and I'm using the Mac OS X64 architecture. And please ensure that you're using the SDK and not one of the J mods. Go ahead and click download. With the download started, the next thing you'll need is Scene Builder. We'll go up to Products, click on Scene Builder, and click Download. Ensure you're using the right operating system. With the OpenJFX downloaded, we're going to navigate to our command window and we're going to create a location to store some Java libraries. So I'm going to create this in my home directory and I'll call this Java libs. I'll navigate inside of that newly created directory. Next, we're going to copy from our downloads folder the OpenJFX. And then we're going to unzip OpenJFX inside of our Java libs directory. The final step I want to do here is go ahead and remove the zip file. Now, if we do an ls on the unzipped directory here, JavaFX SDK, we'll see that we have legal, lib, and source zip. And looking at the lib folder, we're actually going to see the jars and the lib files that we're going to need for configuring IntelliJ for JavaFX. Next, you need to install the scene builder, and I've already installed it on my system. Scene Builder is very easy to install and you should have no issues. So next, let's go ahead and open up IntelliJ. And we're going to create a new project. We'll ensure we have Java, Red 017 as the project SDK. We'll click Next. I'm going to create this as a project from template and use the command line app. We'll select Next. And I'm going to call this my first JavaFX app. And ensure that your project location is set where you want it to be created. And the base package can be anything you want it to be. I'm using my com.mdr solutions. Then click Finish. OK. Now, the first step we want to do here to get JavaFX working is we're going to right click on the project folder, go down to open module settings. We're going to check a couple of things here with our project. First, ensure that it is using Pareto 17, that the SDK is the default to 17. We're going to go down to our modules, then down to our global libraries. And what we're going to do is create a new global library to store our JavaFX libs. So Click the plus, then select Java. And we're going to navigate to the location of our Java libs. And what we're going to do is select all of the jar files. Click open. And I'm going to rename this. JavaFX in. With that done, I'll click Apply, then OK. Now, let's go ahead and create our first app. We'll say public class main extends application and ensure you're using JavaFX.application. This is going to require an implementation of a method. Say OK. And in our public static void main method, we'll 
take this line out and we'll use the launch which is a method given to us by the application that we're extending from i'm going to pass in the args from our string method the args from our main method and down here, the, the first step we're going to do is create a parent scene. And this we'll call root. And we're going to use fxml loader dot load. We'll get class and get resource. Now, before I can finish filling this out, I have to create an fxml. Um, file so i'm going to right click on my package i go to new select fxml file we'll call this my java fx app okay notice the controller here we're going to come back and change this in a moment but for now go back to our main method our main class, and we're going to supply this resource with our application here. So we'll type in quotes i java fx dot dash app dot fxml to validate that's my java fx xml correct. Okay. Next, we're going to configure some of the parameters for this scene. So we're going to use the stage that is already given to us at the override start method. So we'll say stage. And we're going to set the title. My first Java FX app. We'll take that stage and we'll set the scene. We'll do this by creating a new scene and we'll supply that scene with the root. Finally, we'll give this some dimensions. I'll say it's going to have a height of 300 and a width of 200. And the last thing we'll do is tell the stage to show when loaded. Go back to my Java FX app FXML, and we see it specifies a controller here. So we're going to create a controller, and I'll create this under my package. It's going to be a simple class, and I'll call it um, the FX controller. And I'm going to create one method in here. We'll say public void set display. And system out print line button rest. Okay, we're going to come back to this in a moment and add a few other details. So, first of all, copy the name of this controller. We'll go back to our FXML app and we'll change this here and paste that in. So, it's referencing the right controller. And next, we need to open our fxml class with scene builder and if you've installed it so far um, in mac os it picks it up off the class path right away but with windows you need to make sure you remember where you've installed it because when you tell this here to open um, in scene builder it's going to ask for the location so make sure you remember the location that you created that okay with scene builder open, we have the anchor pane that was specified. We can see the anchor pane specified here. And if we go to the code of our anchor pane, actually, if we go to the controller of the document, we see we have our controller that's specified. All right, so what we're going to do is, first of all, just create a, um, use an FX, excuse me, what we're going to use is a V box, is a vertical box. We're going to put it on the pane, and I'm going to expand this out to the full dimensions. 
My mouse is acting a little weird here. Next, we're going to create some controls. I'm going to select a button. I'll apply the button in here, and then finally, table. Now, if we go to properties of our anchor pane, we're going to set the alignment to center. This will cause our buttons back. The B box is a vertical alignment box. So what that means is, is as you put elements on this pane, it's vertically going to align them one after the other. So I put my button first and then the label and it's aligning them from top to bottom. My center alignment or my left alignment is controlling where these things are existing within that, that virtual alignment. Next, I'm going to select the button and I'm going to go to the code tab and we'll call this display reading button. And I'm going to set an action. This is on mouse clicked. And because I have already specified a method for my controller, this will automatically see the action, the set display. To go back to our FX controller, you can see that the method there, set display, is already set. Let's go back again, scene builder, and we're going to change the properties of this button, change the text to um, display. Reading and for the label, I'm going to set the label font something that's a little bit bigger, like an 18, a little bit bigger than that. Row 24, select the code value, and again, we're going to give this an ID. And this is display reading label. And if we go, if we save this and go back to our FX app, FXML, you'll see that all of these values are now populated in this file. Okay, go ahead back to your FX controller. We're going to use an FXML annotation. And this annotation is going to basically wire in those components that exist in the XML file. So first one is going to be our button. Make sure you're using a Java FX scene control button. And the name of this button variable has to match the name that was given in our FXML file or within our scene builder. So if we look at our button, the ID is display greeting button. I'm going to map this to it. I'm going to create another FXML. And this is for our label. Again, make sure you're using a Java FX scene control label. And again, this needs to map to the value for the ID set. Paste that in. And we're going to go over here to our set display method. And what I'm going to type is the display greeting label. We're going to set the text to welcome to my first Java FX app. Now, if you've been following so far, what's going to happen based on what's in the FXML file, we know that we have a controller set. The controller is here that specifies the FX controller. And on the button, we set a on mouse clicked action to use the method set display. And so what will happen is, is when we click the button set display, it's going to change the label to welcome first Java FX app. Now, at this point, we may think we could run the app, but we really can't yet do that. And this is because <clears throat> Java FX exists as an external library. So we have to specify how to access this library through a module. 
And this is something we haven't done yet, but we're going to right click on the package. We'll go to module info. The first thing we're going to say is that this app requires a library and it's going to require the Java FXML. Um, Java FX .x FXML. I'm getting tongue tied here. And it's also going to require Java FX controls because we're using some controls, the label and the button. Okay. This is going to open. And what it's going to open is our package name. So mine is com.mdr solutions. And this is going to open to Java FX FXML. And the final thing is we need to export this. And so we're going to say it exports to com MDR solutions. Now, at a very high level, without getting into what all of these keywords are specifying, we see that this module, our my Java FX app, requires two external libraries, the FXML and the and the FX controls. And we're going to open the MDR Solutions app to FXML. And then we're going to export all of this into one module called COM MDR Solutions. Okay. With all of that done and completed, let's go back to our main and we'll click uh, run on the main method here. And what we should see is our application running. Okay, so we have a syntax error here. Let's go over back to the syntax error line. Ah, we have an extra semicolon. We'll take that out and we'll do the main method. We'll run this again. And here is our app. Now, the display settings a little, are a little off, and that is because we specified on the first screen, down here on the start, we specified a width and a height of 200. So we can correct that because if we look at our FXML file, we actually have a different preferred height and width here. So let's go ahead and we'll just close this app for a second. We'll go back to our main method and instead of giving this preferred height and width here, we'll use the preferred height and width in our FXML file. Okay. Sure, everything is saved. And let's run it again. And we should see the app with the preferred dimension. And there we go. Click the button. And it fired off our simple action. You can also see down here that we have a button pressed that has occurred as well. Click it again. It's calling that method. Hey, I hope you found this video useful and helpful. If you did, please be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment for what features you would like to see covered next. In future videos, you're going to be looking at layout managers like VBox and HBox and how to organize your elements and fluidly resize them on the screen. We'll also consider how to populate data elements like the list and interact with them. How to populate the table with data and interact with it as well. We'll look at how to put images on the screen and animate them. We'll also look at how to use CSS for our Java FX applications. And finally, we'll look at the use of audio and video files in our Java FX application. That's it for now. I'll see you soon.